Yeah, we got Frank, Frank also, right? Yeah, we got an addition. This time I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules. So move. Motion by Mr. Lawrence. Second. Second by Mr. Gaines. Any discussion? All in favor? It's approved on a 4 0 vote. If the clerk would read the revisions, please. To the consent agenda, we're adding resolution 5FF, resolution accepting the bid of JE Tally Construction for the Lighthouse Pier parking. Thank you, Gary. Amen. Amen. Right. There's a motion to approve the amended agenda by Mr. Lawrence. Second. Second by Mr. Glavin. Any discussion? All in favor? It's approved on a 4 0 vote. Brings us to the mayor's report, Mayor Gillis. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I'm briefly, uh, you know, we had a lot of rain, had a lot of opportunities to uh, see what we need to do as far as cleanup. Uh, before I turn uh, the floor over to uh, Frank Bardell and talk to insurance, I think Mike uh, has uh, come up with a solution to, uh, I think there's 750 properties that we, uh, code enforcement identified as having to be cleaned up. Mike uh, developed a plan with Crowder Gulf, and I'm going to turn it over to you now, right now, Mike. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Council President. The succession of weather events that we've had, including Hurricane Ida and all the heavy rains associated with that storm, has just caused more trash and debris to pile up than our normal debris contractor, Pelican Ways, can handle in a, with a weekly pickup. We've heard that week after week in this council meeting about the debris that's not getting picked up. And we're, they're being pushed hard, but the, there's just a lot more debris than they can pick up in a single single day or two, the two days that they have in Bluxy. Um, the large piles of marsh grass, including uh, especially in places like uh, um, Eagle Point, uh, are real problems. I mean, giant piles of grass and so forth. In order to catch up, the mayor has ordered a one-week push of additional trucks that we're, we're going to call this Operation Clean Sweep. The extra trucks will be provided by our contingency contractor, Crowder Gulf, who you'll recall from uh, days of uh, cleaning up after Zeta, those great big trucks with the self-knuckle uh, self, uh, boom and a uh, big trailer behind it. We've got uh, two of those trucks coming, one to work north of the bay and one south of the bay, and they'll begin to work next Monday, and they'll work through next Friday and haul as much debris as we can. Residents, uh, what we're trying to do is with this push is to get caught up so that the Pelican Waste can get, go back to a normal routine and, and keep up. Right now, they just can't, they can't keep up. There's just too much stuff out there. Uh, what we're asking, uh, and, and we're, we've got a, a good public affairs push going on this, we're asking uh, residents and business locations to uh, and get uh, get their vegetative debris, limbs, and so forth, and construction materials all out to the curb. The debris, we're asking them to segregate it so that uh, it can be picked up separately. We're asking them to bag loose limbs and uh, limbs, small limbs and trees and so forth. With a good, uh, a good week-long push, we hope to get the backlog of debris removed so that we can go back to a weekly pickup. What's this going to cost us? When you think about it, the debris all got to go to the landfill eventually, whether we take it there or somebody else takes it there. So that's kind of a sunk cost. Uh, what what is uh, additive to us is is, is these um, these extra trucks that that we're going to deploy and the labor that comes with them, and that's about six thousand dollars a day for uh, the five days next week. So we're we'll we'll be pushing this announcement hard, and uh, hopefully uh, this will help us get a head start on the debris problem. So just to be sure, I. Scribble down a few things very quickly. So that's this Friday through Monday. That's this, this Monday through, if I didn't say that right, it's this Monday through the following Friday. Okay, Monday through Friday. And, and key to is separating some of the, more of the uh, uh, old furniture, uh, debris from some projects and separate from limbs and debris. Uh, right. And, okay. that's, and I think we'll push through B-mail and some of those other things. Separation of the piles. Right. I'm already mixed up, but you know we're going to do our very best, and uh, the folks that you know, we spend some money with will depend on them uh, doing the labor and the heavy lifting to get okay. that. So that's 150 places cleaned up. 
Monday through Friday of next week. That's commercial and residential. Yeah, anything they can get their hands on, on they're going to go right down the street and pick up anything that's there. And that's get it to the curb, segregate. Yeah. You've got yard or tree waste. You've right. got garbage. You've right. Oh, no, that doesn't include garbage, does it? Not garbage. It does not include no. garbage. It's just it, trash. It, yes. you know, in, in the past, trash, rubbish, tree waste. In the past, there was some confusion about putting you know, on uh, an adjacent uh, a vacant lot. Well, you know, they, anything, we've got 750 locations, make sure they, they do. So that's going to be where they're going to be checking. And anywhere else, they be pick it up, pick it up. You see it, pick it up. All right, so that's the big push through Operation Clean Sweep. Clean sweep, man. Okay. Clean sweep. All right. Anything else? A nice Mr. ring to it. Anything <laughs> else, Mr. Leonard? <laughs> That's it. Let me add. We're you know in the, in the middle of a, an assessment of what needs to be done between now and cruising, and uh, we're not prepared to uh, give you the updates. But uh, some of you all, uh, are aware of what we're trying to do to get uh, Highway 90 in the sand, and, and, and in conjunction with MDOT and. Uh, the governor and, and, and everyone else that uh, the, the county in order to get this ship shape by the start of cruising we may or may not be done but i think we've made some some tremendous progress in, in uh, the team that we've engaged to to manage the project bit you know uh, get the the numbers together we have the numbers together i'm not quite ready to pull the trigger with uh, who's going to pay what but that's a, a mm -hmm. big process and it's still important so we'll update you uh, as soon as we feel we've got the the act together so we can go forward. All right, thank you, right, Mr. Right. Mayor. One, at the end of my report, I'll ask Frank to come up and give us an update. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Anywhere. Thank you. Um, I have a one-page report in front of each one of y'all. Um, it's time to renew our casualty program. We've had a relationship, or the city of Bluxy's had a relationship with our current carrier, Brit, for over 20 years now. Um, due to the hardening of the market, and we've discussed that in the budget, obviously we've seen the market harden and um, coverage get cut over the past several years. Uh, we really pushed this hard, and we do have another quote in. Uh, we got it in yesterday. Um, that's uh, the option two, the one beacon option. One Beacon's a great carrier, A-rated carrier. Um, I've talked to uh, Mr. Abad. Obviously, he deals with the carriers a lot uh, and the adjusters a lot. He has done business with them, feels comfortable. They've also accepted Associated Adjusters, which is y'all's adjusting firm, uh, to adjust the claim. One issue, uh, we have several issues going on with this program right now, is uh, we need them to match some of our coverages, especially when it comes to our vessels. Uh, there's, uh, and we've asked for these questions to be answered. I'm not asking for anything today. I'm going to come back to y'all on the 28th uh, with the resolution, the final program. We'll continue to work with the administration. I will say uh, the administrative staff, One Beacon, has been very exhaustive in the questions they've asked, and they've, y'all staff has really worked hard on getting that. Our workers' comp is going to be, if we take option two, we can get One Beacon to, um, uh, match the coverages that we currently have or exceed the coverages that we currently have. Um, the excess comp is what's driving our premium increase at that point in time. Uh, so they we have marketed that. The excess comp market's very difficult. They did not increase your self-insured retention, which is good. And uh, actually, one beacon decreases our uh, aggregate loss limit, which is going to be helpful the Tort Claims Board has a new executive director, and the Tort Claims Board three weeks ago, and in fact, the administration will get a letter this week, at the end of this week, from the Tort Claims Board advising them of uh, the recalculation, which uh, the city of Biloxi is in very good shape as far as we fund our loss fund 100%, and the new calculation is going to require 50% of current claims or exposure and 75% moving forward which is going to be a lot of work on your staff's hands because in order for the actuary to get that, there's, we're going to need a lot more data. And it's at a very bad time of year, obviously, uh, that we have to do this for, for your staff. And so it's going to take some time. They do know, and they have seen y'all's actuary reports currently. They know y'all's loss fund, and they know y'all's insurance program. And they're very comfortable with what the city of Biloxi's doing 
uh, compared to a lot of the other cities that are self-insured in the state. And so that concludes what I have now. Next week on the 28th, I'll have very detailed, if we do move to One Beacon, we'll have a very detailed uh, synopsis of the change of coverages. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bordeaux. Any questions or comments from the council of Mr. Bordeaux? You, you said there'll be something next next week on the agenda. Yes, sir. We'll have a resolution. Okay. And at that point in time, and I've talked to uh, Councilman Tisdale, uh, the new flood risk 2.0 is looking to be very disastrous. I'm going to give you all, uh, if you all would like, a bigger report. It's going to affect the city, uh, y'all's flood insurance policies, but y'all's residents are really going to get affected. Uh, in Biloxi, uh, all along the Mississippi Gulf Coast. It's going to be worse than Bicker Waters. Oh, one question. Uh, Mr. Lawrence has a Mr. Lawrence has a question. Mr. Boyle. Are you trying to adjust these premiums from next week, too? Or are they going to be the same? Are you, are you still so, working on it? So we're still con Britt came back. That's option one. That's our current carrier. They came back today and said that there is no adjustment in premium. We're still working with One Beacon on coverages and premium. If we want to match apples to apples and increase our, our uh, loss fund from 600000 to 750000 we're going to see if there's significant savings in doing that. I wouldn't recommend, if it's, if it's uh, you know, not very good savings, I definitely wouldn't recommend doing that because that'll hurt you on the actuary side of it. And that number is going to be a lot bigger than this number. And so it would be a net loss if we did that. But we are asking for different, and, it, and they're also, thrown in a lot of coverages that we don't need. And so we're going to go back and forth. If it's not costing us anything to get those coverages, then we'll leave them if it is. The number one issue is our vessels. Uh, that's the number one holdback on, on moving carriers is they've told me in an email that they're covered, but then you read in the policy forms and they don't give us coverage for them. And so I, I want to clarify that in the policy forms. So. There is also another issue on the law enforcement liability as it relates to uh, the tort claims endorsement. I, we're asking them to clean up some of the language on that to make it very clear. So, Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Bordeaux. Uh, Thank you. I think Mr. Abide had a comment or an update. Thank you, Mr. Abide. Yeah, just as... Uh, Follow up to the mayor's report. This is on the Veterans Avenue Pier. You may recall last year the council, uh, along with the county, entered into an agreement to uh, have RW rebuild the Veterans Pier. And shortly thereafter, the Secretary of State uh, filed suit against the city and the county for an injunction saying we didn't have the right to do that, that we needed to uh, have a Tidelands lease before we could do anything. Uh, there were arguments held yesterday in Hancock County before Judge Slogel. Both sides had cross motions for final disposition. The court ruled in the favor of the city and the county saying that uh, no title lands lease would be needed here because there are already existing statutes that give us the right to control our harbors and piers. And, and in fact reclaim some things too. Yeah. That's my co-counsel. But um, then the, uh, and the Secretary of State had a cross motion saying he had sole authority, which was denied. So we're waiting on uh, to put that in writing. That was an oral opinion she gave, but within the next uh, couple of weeks, we should have that, which will, will be a big help to things we're trying to do in the city to give public access to the waterfront and, and uh, help promote what what we feel Tidelands is all about. Thank you, Mr. Abide. Does co-counsel have any more comments? I'll rest my case. There you go. Excellent. Uh, right, we'll move on to you one question. Oh, we've got a question. All this stuff been in the paper about the spillway. What actually is that good for the city? What's going on? Is, I think it's work, Peter. Yeah. Because it's been on TV and everything, so I know they won some, lost some. So where are we really at? Right. The the headline was uh, case thrown out. The the case. There were two cases filed. One was by the Secretary of State, which just said there should be an environmental impact statement given. That case was dismissed. The city and the county and the coalition had a separate suit, which 
talked about wanting the environmental impact statement, but also wanted some other things done for the fishery industry and things like that. That was not thrown out and that's allowed to go forward. So there is still that part of the, uh, that part of the case is still open and alive. Uh, the indirect effect of this lawsuit was uh, we know that they have been very cautious on any openings since we've taken this action and gotten this out into the public domain. So uh, they've acknowledged they have that discretion to, to open the Morganza, but they're being very cautious on any sort of, uh, any sort of just random openings into our sound. So, and that's not to say still there's uh, room for some further discussions and, and interactions and legislation because that issue has now come out into the forefront because of the action that started right here in the city council. Right. With the Morganza, that's really that don't affect us, does it? That's more west. North. The Morganza well, open, opening the Morganza relieves the need to open the Bonnie Carey. That's yeah. that's the argument on that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abide. Um, there are no departmental reports. That brings us to uh, council reports. I'll start with Mr. Glavin and Ward 6. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a couple of things. I know we've had a lot of rain uh, and some flooding. Uh, there was a report in Lauren Falls uh, of some uh, flooding in the neighborhood in a section that uh, hasn't flooded in a long time. I'm just asking the administration if they can open an investigation into drainage work uh, that was purported uh, on Campbell Drive, which is the adjacent uh, area and road that may have uh, diverted some of that storm water I'm into Lauren Falls. So if you, if you could uh, check that out, that would be good. Uh, the other the, thing, you got a comment I, on it? or I pulled the work order that, uh, that was two years ago when we did that work. And I'm not seeing that the, there's any water being diverted that was, wasn't there before, but we're gonna go back down and look at all the drawings and talk to the contractor that did the work. Okay, fair enough. I mean, you know, one of the things we keep hearing is, boy, there was more water than there's ever been. Well, no kidding. Well, I appreciate that, thank you. Mm -hmm. if, if we find something can correct it, fine. If it's done appropriately and there's no obstruction, then uh, you know, we'll continue to move on. Um, also, I have a pending request. Uh, been out there some time uh, for an SAV report from Seymour Engineering. If we can line him up to come to the council to give us a report on uh, SAVs and, and update us on that, I would appreciate it. Um, I know I shouted out to some uh, people last week that assisted in some of the hurricane relief uh, for Hurricane Ida. I want to specifically name Judd Atkins, who's the owner of Tailgaters. Uh, who provided a drop-off point uh, for numerous supplies. A uh, group of men, volunteers and women, uh, went down to Dulac uh, this past week and fed over a 1,000 people. Uh, we, we cooked everything we had, gave every potato chip we had away, and uh, those people really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and then last, um, I just want to make a comment. Uh, this uh, subject is probably going to come up uh, with with the uh, Keesler gate enhancements and the roundabout, uh, but we, we had talked some time ago on displaying a fighter jet or a jet uh, somewhere to, as it used to be a long time ago, we used to have a, a plane on, on display. Um, and there's a lot of people that are, have some interest in, in resurrecting that. Um, Mr. Bernie uh, Marinovich is a, uh, in the audience today, and, and I'm going to surrender the rest of my time to let him come up and uh, just say a few words. And if uh, we can kind of keep this in our hearts and minds with the uh, mayor and General Edmondson uh, to see if we can uh, get this ball rolling and eventually uh, have a nice display of this uh, this uh, new jet. Yeah, Bernie, you want to come up and say a few words? Bernie's coming up, and as he's coming up, just as an update, we know that we've. Uh, We've uh, addressed this with uh, Congressman Palazzo's office, and that he has, uh, he has or is going to talk to the Secretary of the Air Force about a plane. And um, let me throw another addition mm -hmm. again. Uh, over the years, uh, in in conjunction with, uh, I think the Air Force Museum, there's a 104 
that uh, can be relocated. We take, I think, with the Chevis re resurrected some of the, the site plan that we had the F-86 on Highway 90. Uh, Air Force Museum has given us the, or given the okay to relocate that plane. Now, uh, I haven't talked with, with Boothby and his liaison in, in trying to get that relocation. Uh, I know there was some talk about, you know, the, uh, the roundabout. But, uh, you know, I know where we are with regard to that 104 that has been identified by the Air Force Museum and the ability to move it somewhere. But also, I've been cautioned by two generals uh, in Biloxi, as well as some other ones, that uh, the maintenance of that, you know, is, is significant, and that the Air Force Museum folks will help maintain it. So wherever it is, so that's the that's as far as I know. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Brandon? Barney, you got anything you want me to pass out, or you just want to talk? I, most of you have heard from me already. I apologize, Mike. <laughs> I've been pestering you with emails, and and uh, you know your patience has been not a problem. Mr. Marinovich, if you could move just if you could move just a little closer to the mic. How's this? Thank you. Perfect. You I thought I was speaking loud enough, but probably not. But most of you've gotten emails from me. If you opened them, I made a rendition that was uh, located on the on the new site, I took a picture of the site. I found this F-100 and my talented daughter put these together to make it look like the real thing, to get an idea of what that, what that would look like. Uh, it all kind of started with the old display on White Avenue. Uh, misconception that Katrina took it, oh, that's not true. It was taken down before Katrina that jet was one of two of 180 that were built and the Air Force Museum wanted it. So they packed it up and took it off before Katrina. It sits at Edwards Air Force Base today. And I've got pictures of that, I found it. The last picture was 2002. So it still exists, I don't know if we want to bring that back or not. It's- F-86, is that mm -hmm. okay. it's, it's beat up pretty bad, but they can work wonders on a model. But also, too, this is the 80th anniversary of Keesla Air Force Base in Biloxi, 1941 to 2021. So that in itself is, is a significant milestone. And to let this pass without doing something with this roundabout, which is, is going to be beautiful if we do it right. I don't know the process, the, you know, what we have to go through to get it done, who pays for what, Kenny? I don't, I don't know. I don't know all the ins and outs, but somebody's got to pay the bill. But Remember, Keesler is a billion dollar partner with Biloxi. 2020 uh, report impact was 972 million, rounded off to a billion. And today's standards with Congress, a billion dollars, a trillion dollars. But it, uh, certainly we shouldn't let this pass and let it go and put uh, God knows what in that circle. Let's, let's do it. And I did a survey on my Facebook page with uh, one of the uh, pictures of the old display. And I got over 500 likes and over 100 comments about this project. I don't know how, how significant 500 likes is, but I've never gotten 500 likes on anything I posted on Facebook. So I think the, the comments are very positive and uh, the people of Biloxi would appreciate it. Any questions? George, this is in your your ward, right? Good idea. Forest it, Avenue? All I can tell you is Keith has always been great with us. If there's any way this possibly could happen, they will make it happen. They've always, they always well, worked great with the city of Bluxton. Well, it's interesting that Colonel Edmondson was there in 2017 when we tried to get this done the first time. Well, she's back as Major General Edmondson. So she's very familiar with what we're asking here, I think. Okay, thank you, Mr. Marinovich. Uh, anything else, Mr. Glavin? <clears throat> no, that concludes my report. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Uh, Mr. Barrett, Ward 7. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, as I was um, leaving today, I noticed that we were out picking up the, the debris again, um, just in those people, for those people in the low-lying areas that had stuff come in after Ida. I just want to make sure that we stay on top of that to get that off of them. I know it's our, our guys are having to be taken away from other things to do that, but just if we can stay on top of that and, and get all that out of there. Um, and um, 
secondly, I, I talked to Sherry today. I don't see her here, but um, as far as far as I know that we've got the basketball goals and the um, the Ball pickleball court. going up. Uh, I had requested, and I don't know if we're going to be able to do it, but if we can, to um, put a privacy fence around that pump station right at the front of the park, just to sort of, uh, there's a fence already in place, but if we can just, it's not, it won't be much, just put a privacy fence around that to uh, just make it more um, aesthetic, look better for everyone driving by there. And then uh, again, um, I saw his name on the agenda today. Um, if Tally can um, get out there and take up that silt fence, it's been up there for almost a year now. And then the floating devices in the canal mm. that's supposed to stop the fence. I mean, we've asked him multiple times, and if, if we could get him to get out there and take those up, that'd be great. And then just echoing what Kenny said, I know we've had an absorbent amount of rain. Um, I think I saw somewhere where we usually get around 60 inches a year, and we're we're pushing 100 in Harrison County right now. And I know that that's, um, you know, certain rains, there's nothing we can do. You can't dig a ditch big enough to, to take 12 inches of, of rain in a very short amount of time. But um, now that, you know, we're almost into October, the grass cutting is going to slow down some. If we can just make a, an effort to, to get in those areas where we do have those problems and get those ditches cleaned, get those culverts, you know, cleaned out and stuff, um, so that whenever these rains start back up again, I think we're going to have a little break here now from what I can see. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. um, if we can get some of that done before we get around to, you know, next year when we start getting good rains again, that'd be great to get some of that accomplished. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Uh, Mr. Deming in Ward 4. I have a couple of things, and I, the majority of them re okay. pertain to the exorbitant amount of water we've received, but I'll, I'll talk more about that in private with you guys. One couple of things, if you could just give me a report on 2544, it's Mercedes Drive or Walda. Dr. Um, Atkins, I think there's been some, some uh, engineers sent out there and public works a couple of times. There's an issue with a road that was never completed and some property that was developed, but, but uh, turned over to the city. If I could just get an update on what's really going on with that property, I'd appreciate that. I also want an update on the concrete roads where we're out on the concrete roads in the Bluff subdivision. I know we went out there, we marked them, we determined what's appropriate for replacement. I just want to know where we're at in that process. Um, and, I don't know, I, I walked in late. Um, I was walked in as the mayor was giving his report. So I hope I didn't miss anything important, but I'll stay after and if you updated us on anything that I missed and need to hear, um, I would love for you to, to up, uh, apprise me of that. I also wanna recognize Kevin Felsher in the back, our state rep. Is, I think that's Kevin Felsher. That is. <laughs> that's a little recognition, doing a great job for, for the city of Biloxi, Wise and Jackson. Yeah. Um, did I get it right? 2544 Mercedes Drive? Dr. Atkins. Play. That is Dr. Atkins. Yeah. And I'll verify that address. That's off the top of my head. I'm sorry. I left my notes in the car, so I'm going to walk outside and get them. So I'm not being disrespectful to your ward updates or your council reports, but I need to get my notes. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Deming. Mr. Lawrence in Ward 1. Yeah. Uh, man, uh, cruising, whatever we need to do to get the beaches cleaned up. We need to step up and get that in. I know you're working hard on the working with two or three different groups. And I mean, that's that's the $25 million impact for the state of Mississippi. That's huge. To put up and, that's right. put and there. It's, it's, it's impactful. Whatever we do will be impactful for the future. We've had right. a tremendous uh, season as far as uh, visit, visitation, and we want to make sure they get the right impression. We've engaged, as, a, as I mentioned, a team that would uh, could pull this off, and I think we've got some solid ways to do it. Um, and uh, I'm very confident that uh, what we'll walk away from is, is something we'll all be proud of, especially when you drive down Highway 90. I mean, it's, a, it's a good thing. It, it's a huge event. Yeah. And people are looking for anything to do right now, which is a good thing. Because the city will be back in the city but on Wednesday like they normally are. Yeah. And everything cleaned up and looking good. It makes it make a great impression. And I know to tell with the 750 pile of debris picking up. It's just something we have to do. Yep. You know, In that case, we're doing that trying to help Pelican Waste. Are we being reimbursed by anybody? Well, there is a they, possibility. Behind, so I would, the possibility, we don't count on it. 
Yeah. And uh, uh, but I did repeat when at the uh, utility authority meeting. So we've got significant challenge. Uh, and again, we were not alone. But Gulfport, all the all the uh, cities and, and the county, hammering you know uh, the situation with Pelican Waste. I said we're going to take action. We cannot afford to uh, not take action. And and there may be I may be sending somebody a bill. Yeah. FEMA has not activated Category A, which is debris removal for Hurricane Ida. So they'd have to do that uh, in order for us to be able to request reimbursement. So we'll wait and see, but you know, we, as the mayor said, we've got an op. We may have an option to, to get reimbursed. We may not, but we can't wait any longer. These piles are just not going anywhere. No, it's something we definitely need to do. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. We'll get reimbursed fine, but I mean, you got to clean the city up. And everybody knows that thing bad. The water level is high. That's why the ground soaks. And I, uh, X minute ago, right down Santini yesterday. And it's the sidewalks has so much of that film and everything from it, and it's slippery. It, and I didn't know if there's something we could do at the city to steam clean those things. Well, you can't it, walk on them. It's a temporary thing, and you're talking about the algae and the slime that right. actually, as as these spring as these uh, springs fall, come through onto sidewalks and streets. That's what it's going to happen. It's on Bayview. It's on a number of places: uh, uh, Graham, Benaki, Iroquois, uh, er everywhere. It's a challenge. We can do some things temporarily with, you know, at least blasting it, you know, where people won't slip as they walk yeah, through there. But I mean, it's a long-term solution. I don't know if Billy Ray's here or not, but uh, there is some French drain or some impact to keep those springs from dripping onto the surfaces that cause that, that thing. So, but we're we're going to meet those challenges. Yeah, I think that's good that we're looking at that. But right now, immediately, right. we need to get those sidewalks right. cleaned down, pressured. Pressure walk we have to do because, like you said, you can't only walk out your front door. And two or three people already fell. Yep. So I mean, it's not good for the city. Uh, the last thing is we uh, had the Seafood Museum had that drawdown, big success, and we had to, we flown in the greatest MC in the world, Kenny Glavin did all that for us. <laughs> he had a good time, didn't you, Kenny? It was a good time. Yeah, but they had a nice crowd. Well, I didn't get your number, your uh, name pulled, but it was close. Yeah, yeah, put my name up pretty quick, but that's okay. And everybody else, was, that's it, that's my report, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence, Miss Newman in Ward 3. Uh, Mr. Gaines in Ward 2. That's the one, oh, there we go. All right, I want to kind of foot stomp the, uh, the debris pickup. Um, I appreciate the guys from the city getting out there this weekend, uh, working a little overtime Saturday and Sunday. Um, guy by the name of Demetri Chocolate out there with the boom, picking up a lot of stuff in uh, Ward 2. So I appreciate you guys putting those people out there because it's been out there a very long time. And Operation Cleanup will help us out a whole lot. So I appreciate you guys moving forward to get that done uh, with Pelican Waste or whoever's supposed to be picking up. You know, they're still kind of limited in coming out there. And I know that they're shorthanded, but uh, this will definitely help a whole lot. Um, I wanted to also mention about there's been a lot of illegal dumping, and that's causing a, a big issue, uh, especially along the railroad tracks. If we can get some signs along the railroad tracks where people are dumping with uh, just using it as a dumping ground, and we have to clean it up. And uh, if we can get some signs out there to let people know you can't dump there. And if they do dump there, we need to be able to find them or something. Um, they're, they're dumping them on a lot of uh, empty lots and they're dumping them in places that uh, they don't need to be dumping them. And there should be some consequences in doing that. So we need to just kind of uh, be uh, uh, mindful that these things are going on, and that's what's make, helping making our city look not good in doing that. Um, Walt, I need to just get a little report on Walt. Um, fire hydrant on Ebony Lane, we discussed it once before. Just give me an update when you can about that, on that issue. Um, what else I got? Uh, I want to thank uh, Mike Leonard for coming out, uh, taking care of Jefferson Street for me, looking. They were excited about that. And I think we did talk a little bit about go ahead and getting that paved, but um, I'll just make a little small addition to turn the corner and go north on Lee Street. 
uh, some people from the, the theater were complaining about coming over the track in that area. So just kind of um, look at that area a little bit too, because I think that area is kind of rough and that'll, until we get the construction over that way. Um, other than that, um, I would like to give the remainder of my time to um, my father, Father um, Greg Bears, uh, to come speak about um, fish and loaves. Our, our, our father, getting set. Let me something I failed to mention when in talking about Pelican Waste. One thing that was was brought up uh, at the Utility Authority and Pelican Waste responded. What has taken place? Uh, there is a limit. Eight cubic yards per stop. Gotcha. There was some perception that people were they'd pick up something, and go to the next one. They wanted to, you know, part of the policy is to touch as many people as they can, but eight cubic yards at a time. Gotcha. And that presented some problems. You no, know, everybody thought that you know, pick up everything I got. Well, that's if you put you know 200 yards, you're going to do it eight eight at a time. So that was a policy that everybody you know maybe weren't was not clear on. So that's about a, a, a pickup truck. Uh, load, that's what they're responsible for. So they tried to touch as many people as they could, eight gotcha. cubic yards at a time. That's it. I'm sorry. So we that. just got to really educate our, edu try to educate our people in a little bit in that area. Okay. Good afternoon. Thanks for the time, Councilman, for sharing the time. I'm Gregory Guevara. I am a priest of the Diocese of Biloxi, but I'm not here to represent the diocese. I'm currently the president of the board for loaves and fishes. Uh, our main thing is to feed the hungry. So I'm here to beg for your help, for your collaboration, for your awareness. Um, we've been serving the hungry since 1983. Uh, we're right over on Water Street and have been there for over a decade. Our present situation is uh, the building's being sold and we have three months left in, uh, in our lease. So by the end of December, we have to, uh, to move. Uh, you all have a lot more connections and resources than we do. We thought it was going to be an easy um, find for a new physical site, and this has been going on all of this year, and we, uh, we have not found a site. Um, pr presently, um, we are serving more numbers of hungry. It's probably before we serve four days a week on um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday breakfast and lunch. And it's approximately 500 to 700 per week. If we can't find a place by the end of December, <clears throat> multiply that number by the days and that's how many people will be on the streets looking for food. Um, a healthy community takes care of those who are in need. And I know the present administration is aware and, and uh, Hopefully together we can find a place or do something for this issue that's going to come, um, you know, and not too, they're not too far distant. Uh, since your mission on division also serves the three days that we don't, um, but they cannot uh, at the present take care of the capacity for seven days. So I'm just asking you um, as our representatives in public service, this is an issue that may come uh, sooner than later. And it's something that we can do together. We can find a way to, to feed the hungry. So I'm asking you if you know anybody or um, have connections with a piece of property that might be available here in Biloxi, um, please come forward and let us, let us know. We have much of our own equipment and appliances to move into a new um, situation. Of course, that will take, uh, take some time to do. There is, in the distant future, the Old Mercy Cross property, which is hopefully going to be developed with multiple agencies located in that area. But that's in the distant future. This is fairly proximate, and uh, we really would need your help uh, with folks that you know or resources that you know that can alleviate this possible um, reality. Any questions, comments? Uh, Paul, the building you're looking for have to have a kitchen? Say it again, please. A kitchen? The building yes, we need a, yeah. If we have to have do. a kitchen like an auditorium. We have most of the equipment, we just need a place. Yeah. yeah, we've got the commercial kitchen, we've got walk-in refrigerators and freezers. We need a, a storage place for dry goods and then where they can sit. 
So we have much of our equipment, the ice machine, we have the hot serving line, all that's ours, so we can move it. So we just need a location. What capacity size do you need, people-wise? Capacity, um, Oh uh, yeah, the, the capacity with the 3,000 and 4,000 would be an ideal situation. Okay. 2,000 would work because we you'll, we'll serve 80 to 100 at breakfast and at lunch, and then of course it just depends. Sometimes the numbers will uh, will surge. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you, Father. Any other questions? That concludes my report. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Gans. I believe, Mr. Barrett, you had another question or comment. Yeah, and I guess Jerry stepped out, so I, I'll just have to ask him later. So, again. Okay. Thank you. A um, couple of things, just an observation. Some of the lights on uh, the north end of Pops Ferry Bridge, I know that's been an ongoing challenge, and I'd driven it several nights ago and somebody had mentioned it and there's still a few lights uh, at the north end of the Pops Ferry Bridge at a route. Um, and I'm trying to follow up on the tree mitigation. We were talking about uh, tree bank. I'll, I'll keep coming back to this. My, I guess my, my first, really my only question is if we, if we can establish a tree bank similar to a, a land bank for developers to contribute to uh, the cost of uh, uh, trees and tree replacement, are we losing opportunities for contributions as developments move forward? And by, by that I mean if we have uh, a subdivision next week that comes for the planning commission and, and uh, maybe for platting, replatting or whatever, and there is some tree mitigation required. I think it's currently three to one or whatever. Um, where we may be losing those opportunities for folks to contribute as an alternative to such a tree bank. Okay. So anyway, you know where I'm going with this, Peter. Are, are we getting any closer to an ordinance, or? Yeah, uh, talking with Jerry last week, I think their final review with the tree committee is this week. There's going to be a, you know, come one way or the other, there's going to be something submitted to the Planning Commission within the next three weeks to 30 days, and then it'll come before y'all. It still has to be advertised and all that. Okay. So. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, also, I know we had spoken several council meetings ago about a workshop on fireworks. Remember, this is an ordinance that I think first appeared on the agenda last December. So sooner or later, we'll deal with fireworks. I'm hoping it's sooner. Did we want to set a workshop uh, for the, maybe on the 28th, our next council meeting? Maybe uh, it, could, it could immediately follow our regular council meeting at 1.30 just to kick around any discussions, clarify things. I know we had a couple of retailers, I think, and I thought they may want to have some input or be here. What was that date? You I'm looking at next Tuesday, the 28th. Not that we would take any action that day. It's just an opportunity to, to have some input and look at what the, the possible changes are. And if there are retailers, I think there are two or three currently retailers in the city. They may have something to say about all this. It'll be interesting hearing about that. So can we shoot for uh, next Tuesday, immediately following our 1.30 meeting? Is that okay with everybody? Everybody's good on their calendar? All right, I care if you'd make that note, please. Um, that's all I have. All right, that uh, brings us next to the public agenda and citizens' comments. Uh, each speaker will have up to three minutes to speak. Uh, when you do come forward to speak, if you would sign in in front of the microphone, there should be a sign-in sheet and a pen. Say your name clearly so the clerk can get your name recorded accurately. And uh, if, if you speak for three minutes, at some point, the clerk will say your time is up. Remember, it's a, it's a time to comment. It's not really a question and answer period. We'll allot up to 45 minutes in this uh, council meeting today for citizens' comments. That said, is there anybody on my left, your right, that would like to speak? Yes, ma'am. 
if you would please come up to the microphone and there should, should be a sign-in sheet, probably the one in the middle I'm thinking would be fine and there should be a sign-in sheet. There you go, okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Ramsey, I didn't see you sneak in. Let me go ahead. You go first, and Gilbert, I'll get to you next, okay? All right. I'll All right. Wait. No sorry. problem. Thank you. Cass Woods, 1060 Division Street, Ward 1. Um, I've been having a problem with my garbage since May. It didn't get picked up in May at all. It hasn't been picked up this month. Between June and August, maybe five times. I talked to the uh, garbage people. I saw them last week, and I asked them why they weren't picking up my garbage. He said the, ve the vehicle was too heavy to come through, yet Coastal uses Waste Pro and they come through and pick up their garbage. Um, he wants me to take my garbage to Porter. I don't pay to have my garbage picked up at Porter. I pay for 1060, and that's where it should be picked up. I asked different places if I could stop paying for garbage. I'm paying for a service that I don't get. I don't like that, and I shouldn't have to do that. I'm not planning on taking my garbage anywhere. Leaving it at 1060 for them to pick it up. It's sitting out there now. And the guy told me, he said, oh, those are your two garbage cans that's out by the road? I said, yes. So what am I supposed to do to get the um, situation resolved? When, when the garbage cans are full, the other garbage bags are there. Animals tear them open, and there's garbage everywhere. So I have to keep the garbage inside my yard, which still gets torn up trying to keep the animals from it. That's not sanitary. And I don't think that's right. If I have a contract with them, I'm paying, I'm doing my part, they should do their part. And it's not happening. This has been an ongoing situation for a while. From May to June, from May to now, you know how many days that is for garbage pickup? To only get mine picked up five times, it hasn't been picked up this month at all. Thank you, Ms. Woods. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I'm happy to speak with you about this if you like, or if you're in Ward 1, I'm sure Mr. Lawrence. Bofo. <laughs> <laughs> I want my garbage picked up. You have the right to have your garbage picked up, and you pay your fee. You should have it picked up at 1060 Division Wait. Street. Uh, Peter asked, what's your address? What's your address? 1060 Division Street. The Division Street. Right there by Coastal. Waste Pro comes through in their truck, and they, picks up, they pick up Coastal trash. Why is the other garbage truck heavier than that one? I'm right there where all that road work is going on, and they have all those large vehicles coming through. I don't think it's true. Fofo, this is the one that you talked to Alan Lane about. 1060 Division Street. All right. This is Case Woods. The same problem. They're not picking it up again. 1060. 1060. 1060. In the last five months, maybe five times. Yes, ma'am. That, that shouldn't be a problem. It's, it's a waste management. You're talking about. Right. It's a trash. It's uh, garbage. It's a garbage pickup, Thank not you. debris. And I called their office to talk to them. They were extremely rude and hung up. Okay, thank you. Right, thank you, Ms. Woods. Uh, Mr. Ramsey, you're up, sir. Thank you. My name is Gilbert Ramsey. I'm a military veterans innovation outreach specialist. I'm here to introduce Secretary of State Business ID 723588, Military Veterans Association. I'd like to be put on the agenda for the 28th. I reached out to introduce this opportunity because I attended a human-centered design workshop at the Veterans Health Administration when I had a heart monitor on my chest. At that time, 
the VA wouldn't recognize external partnership. They wanted internal partnership only. Well, they've offered external partnership opportunity. I've, I've registered for um, outreach, innovation, manufacturing opportunity to retain the students, hire the heroes and spouses of the United States Chamber of Commerce. What I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen, I'm introducing new opportunity with a, and I'm utilizing my bottled water company as a platform to introduce this manufacturing opportunity. What I've done is International Committee, Red Cross, I've introduced this business opportunity with Red Cross for manufacturing opportunity here locally. What I'm doing is, there's a hub from Stennis all the way to Ingalls. I'm going all across the state, consortium, all universities. What I've done, ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking at more, more, more opportunities for the students and more opportunities for us. L3C uh, legislation initiative. L3C legislative initiative, Louisiana introduced me to, where you can incorporate 501c3 with LLC purposes. <laughs> But what I'm doing, innovation opportunity, is an opportunity like Amtrak, like the casinos. We rolled our dice. I'm rolling our dice. I have an opportunity for global recognition for the hospitality state. Senator Roger Wicker sent me a letter. I've had this opportunity. You know, Veterans Health Administration wants me to do a story in Inspire Magazine to introduce myself. But I come here to make sure to implement appropriately because I know what y'all are about. Y'all have my brothers and sisters in your backyard, the Veterans Health Administration. I have this opportunity for y'all. All I'm asking to be open the door and put me on the agenda for the 28th because I'm looking for sponsorship with the Hancock Bank Initiative. That's where our bank is located. Mr. Sweatman's waiting on me as well because I have this for us, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all been watching for so long and I have restored council uh, money as well for comprehensive plan for enhancement recreation opportunities. I'm looking to miss your funds for another opportunity. I have all this in my head and my heart. And I'm here to make sure it's implemented appropriate for y'all's capability and y'all's passion. And I'm here. All I'm asking, open the door, put me on the agenda on the 28th, and I'll bring my presentation and put it on the screen. That's all I'm asking, because my president CEO will be present with me to make sure it's implemented with us, I'm the legal counsel and all. And so here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for your attention. You have a blessed day. Be safe. Thank you, Mr. Ramsey. Anybody else on my left, your right? Anybody on my right, your left? Anybody in the back? All right, that concludes citizens' comments. We'll move to the policy agenda. If the uh, notice the next two items of first readings, if the clerk would read item A, please. Ordinance to amend the zoning map for amending of the PD planned development traditional neighborhood master plan for the property located at 2330 Atkinson Road. Second. There's a motion by Ms. Newman, second by Mr. Gines. Thank you. That brings us to the next item on the agenda, also a first reading, if the clerk would read item B. Ordinance to amend selected sections of the land development ordinance to remove two, three, and four family dwellings within the RS5 zoning and salvage yards as a conditional use within RB regional business and industrial zoning. Thank you, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion, is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Gaines, thank you. All right, that's also a first reading. That brings us to a series of second readings. If the clerk would read, um, and then let me just preface this: we had in, we had made individual motions and seconds for some of these ordinances, and then we move them as a group. So we'll we'll do that in the same fashion today. It'll make it a little easier on the clerk. All right, if the clerk would read item C, please. Ordinance amending section five one 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 three and one five of the building code. That motion was by Mr. Gaines and the second by Mr. Barrett. Mr. Gaines. Yeah, this is just updating the building codes. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Okay. Barrett. Anything? Okay. Any any other discussion? C. Item C. Yeah, Mr. Deming. Uh, I'm just curious. Um, one of the changes in C is in section five one three. It's subsection B. It's on the top of the second page or the page right after the section begins. 
the word calendar is put in there. It says 10 calendar days. I was just curious to know what word was there before that, or was there no word? Did we just put the word calendar in there to clarify that it's calendar days and not business days? I got you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You may want to take a seat up here because I've got a lot on the following okay. ones. Well, welcome to the meeting, Mr. Creel. <laughs> That's all I have for C. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on item C? Okay, all in favor of the ordinance as presented? It's approved on a 7 0 vote. That brings us to items, uh, and here's where we motioned and seconded uh, a number of items together items D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, as I recall. So if the clerk would uh, just patiently read each of those items, and then we'll uh, move for discussion. Okay. Ordinance amending section 5111 of the building code. Ordinance amending article 3, chapter 5 of the building code. Ordinance amending section 552, 5520, and 21 of the plumbing code. Ordinance amending chapter 5 of the building codes. <clears throat> Ordinance amending section 562, natural gas of the building code. Ordinance amending section 5210, 51016 of the mechanical code. Ordinance amending section 5121 of the existing building code. Ordinance amending section 5161, energy conservation code. Thank you. These were all moved uh, by Mr. Gines and the second by Mr. Glavin. Mr. Gans. No objection. So that's right. Mr. Glavin, any comments? Or thoughts? I have none. Mr. Deming. Yeah, you might want to go around and come back to me last. Okay, that's a good sign. I'll uh, move to Mr. Lawrence. And question or comment? Yeah, I know, Joe. You put all these on. What are the major changes in any of them? Mainly, it's just updating, uh, addressing some items that were not in there before, like for the. The building code book example, they're addressing tiny houses now. See, we've never had tiny houses being addressed in the building code before. So as new technology comes out in the industry, what they'll do is, or, or new safety recommendations come out, then uh, they'll add those in uh, when the code congress meets every year and send them out as the model code. So there were no significant changes. We go through these as soon as we get them. We spend a couple of months going through them to make sure that there are no significant changes. And mostly what we found is that they're addressing new elements in the industry, like tiny houses, for example. How many square feet in tiny houses? Because, you, know, you know, it's hard for us, Less, it's hard for us to look at all this, because that's what you deal with every day. So that's why I asked that question, to make sure that nothing affecting the people in the long run with any of these rules and regulations that we change it. That's not the case with us. There's nothing significant. There were no significant changes. There were mainly just updates. Right. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from council members or comments? And then I'll return to Mr. Deming. There being none, Mr. Deming. Yeah, um, Peter, some of this may need your assistance as well. Um, in E, a lot of the definition areas were struck out. Is that because we added them to following sections independently? No, I can address that. Yeah. What, what happened is, you know, the building code is not just one book. The building code is made up of many books. And the building code book itself and the residential building code book itself are two volumes that address new construction in commercial and residential. So those are designed for new construction. We have a, a code, it used to be called the, the housing code, but now it's called the international property maintenance code. And what we noticed as we were going through this is that the last time that these codes were updated, some of the elements 
that should have been listed under the International Property Maintenance Code got included in with this code. And so what we're doing, we're not removing them, we're just simply moving them to the right section, which is the International Property Maintenance Code. I, I noticed that some of them refer to appendices um, and you can clearly see that, the, that an A was added before all the appendices. So the old code said appendices A, and now it says AA, or the old one said B, and now it says <coughs> AB, and then C mm -hmm. and AC. So they've all, been, they've all been updated with the A in front of them, but none of the appendices were attached as, as um, exhibits. Where are those new appendices from? That was the way that the, uh, the code book now addresses them in the residential code. They changed it from just an A or a B to an AB, you know, AA, AB, AC. All we're doing is, is updating it to go along with the book. Okay. And that's all I have for E. Now on to F, and this may be why I was wanted uh, Peter involved. F section 594, subsection 1. Um, it says unfit for human habitation, right? And then it auth it authorizes the administration the administration's agent to enter the premises. Okay, I'm showing F is the gas code. You're you're talking it about. Is, I thought M was the, it, did I write down? Let me see. F maybe. I've got. <clears throat> Four F or four H, which is F. Let me see. Right, let me. This part. Oh, no, but this one. Go Could back to E. I think you're just talking about the plumbing. Thank you, Paul. So I apologize, it must have been G that I'm referring to. It's G. Buildings. I mean, let me get caught. Yeah, that's G. Okay, now I'm showing G as the, uh, the mechanical code. This is 4G. Um, it says ordinance amending article nine of chapter five buildings of the code of ordinances of the city of Biloxi, Mississippi. Okay, bear with me just a minute. 4G. You looking at G? Article nine. Uh, I think I found it. 594. This okay. is uh, 4G. Okay. 4G. All right. Article nine. Right. And so if you look at um, section, subsection three says to enter upon the premises for the purpose of making examinations. So are, are, what are we authorizing agents of the administration to do on private property? As far as entering? Yeah. Okay. What we, what we always do is we go up to the door and knock on the door and ask for permission to go on the premises. Now, anything that we can identify that's in the front yard or in the side yards that are bit clearly visible, mm -hmm. we can go ahead and address. Correct. But, but we can't go through any fence. Uh, we are allowed to take pictures over a fence if we have reason to believe that there's a code violation there, but we do not tra we don't trespass onto the property unless someone gives us permission to go onto it. And the way the code addresses it is, anyone over the age of 16, we can get permission from them. Right. I mean, that's an authorized entry. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we're not trespassing that we're vi not violating the third amendment rights to be free as, of unlawful search and seizures we're not invading the curtilage of property and things like that i just want to make sure that well, we're doing this the right way we, and let me just explain one thing there have been some situations where we had to drive down a long driveway to get to a house and along that driveway there were code violations alone there and, but i mean there's no other way to to inspect the property other than to to drive through the property to get to it. And again, anything that's clearly visible, we have the right to address. And, and I, so that's not my, my job isn't to determine what's, what's reasonable entry onto a property, nor what's authorized entry onto a property. I'm just addressing what I, understand. I see in this. Yes, you know, I don't know that 
that there's some case law or some statutes that give governmental entities the right to enter onto a, a private property or drive up a driveway. Mm -hmm. I didn't do the, the research. I'm just asking. The one concern I had was more so the entry of the premises. I want to make sure that we weren't mm -hmm. carte blanche authorizing an, an agent of the city of Biloxi under the administration and not necessarily the police department to enter into a, a premises without without meeting the standard you know, of, of um, what law enforcement would be required to mm -mm. to um, comply with, and as you read through there, it says that um, upon petition of of an agent, an authorized agent, or the petition of five residents of the city of Biloxi, and then it it authorizes certain powers, it vests certain powers to to an um, to an authority to to take certain action, as if probable cause was established by five residents <clears throat> signing a petition. So my question is, is there any, what we'd have to do with witnesses um, in the policing industries, we'd have to determine the credibility of those witnesses before we just went by any random statement of a witness, right? Do we have any mechanism that, that vets a statement by five residents from wherever they are in the city, because it doesn't say they have to be neighbors, they could be at anywhere in the city, and then they sign a petition that authorizes or grants authority to some agent of of the city to enter a premises not in this code there's there's no uh, requirement that there be more than one if we receive a complaint whether it's from a citizen or a council member or whoever we'll go out to investigate and if we see that there's a violation we'll address it excuse me <coughs> If we see that there's a violation, we'll address it. If it's not a violation, then we- So we're, we're, we're addressing in, in this, the context of what you're saying, the exterior of the, of the home or the premises, not breaching the walls of the premises. That's correct, yes sir. All right, thank you. Um, if, if it becomes necessary for us to go into a structure, Okay, so what we'll do is we'll get the judge to issue us a, first we ask for permission, but if permission is denied, right. the code allows us to uh, go to the judge for a writ a right of entry, and that's Thank what you. we do. And that's the mechanism that I was hoping to hear that mm -hmm. we do follow and abide by. Um, lastly, well, I guess not quite lastly, but almost lastly, lastly with this section, there's a section 596, if you turn your attention to section 596, and you may be able to help me out with this because I find it humorous. I don't understand it all the way, but it says the public officer may deem that a dwelling or building is unfit for human habitation if he finds that the conditions exist in such dwelling which are dangerous or injurious to the health, safety, or morals of the person. Mm -hmm. How do we find something to be injurious or dangerous to the morals of a person? Uh, I'm not sure I know the answer to that question. Um, I'll research it for you and find out why that was in there, but that was that language was was in there already. So we'll we'll find out. We'll see what we can find out. Okay. Um, and I mean, what is a if we determine that that is is an opening to 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 creating a situation? Not that anyone in this room or any organization here now would ever use it for the wrong purpose, mm -hmm. but preparing for the fact that somebody or peoples wouldn't be as principled or as just as we may be, or we may think we are, how would we go about amending that or striking that? If we pass this code now, what's, what's, do we have to do a text amendment change and then do an ordinance reading again in the same process? If you want to, if you want to hold this one back, if you'd like to. That's actually in almost, yeah. in, in a lot of them. Yeah. This authority that, that's vested is in many of these codes. Yeah, so, but before you do, let me let me investigate what the purpose was for putting that in, because we may find out that there's a there was a legitimate reason for it to be included in. Well, there. that's why I'm asking if we yeah. pass it now, we can we can do a text change, right? I mean, it would just mm -hmm. be the same processes, setting the ordinance on for a first reading, and then passing a text change. I mean, that's okay. Thank you. Um, now, L is the new floodplain. Now, I know that that one is um, extremely controversial when I've spoken with with residents. Can you can you we, we had that workshop regarding this? Yes. Um, can you give us a brief um, affirmation of the changes and the impact of those changes? Well, again, what this is going to do, it, it will only affect it's only going to affect any new houses that are constructed, 
any houses that have additions added to it or any substantial improvements, which means that they're improving the existing house more than 50% of the fair market value. As far as the existing houses that are here, um, you know, if they're, if they're grandfathered in, we discussed that at the workshop, that the, the new regulations are gonna do away with the grandfather status. So they are gonna be impacted by that, but the one foot free board would only affect those three areas. Well, um, and forgive me for misremembering if I am doing so. The increase, will those will if affect our total rating. Houses that were built prior to this change that only have the one foot added above the BFE, right? Or whatever it was, the SPH something, the special floodplain assessment mm -hmm. something. The houses that were built before that, they will affect our total rating that the ones that are no longer follow our two foot, uh, the, the current proposed increase. We, excuse me. <coughs> We've been told that it's not going to affect those. You know, normally if, if a house was built in compliance with the ordinance that was in place at the time, then it would be grandfathered in. But I, I think your question where it's going is that if, if the, one foot free board is now going to be the standard because it's now required in the new building code book. Are we gonna lose any points for that? No, we've asked that question and we would not lose those points for that. And the going ahead and getting the second foot of free board in there, add an additional uh, 100 points so that we could at least, I mean, make the effort to maintain the 25% discount rather than reverting to the 20% discount. Now, are there any guarantees in this? No, there are no guarantees in this because we've tried to get more detailed information from, from MEMA and we, we can't get it. I, I don't know that they have all the information, but uh, you know, the challenge is, is that this goes into effect October the 1st and we're trying to do everything we can to maintain as much of those discounts for the people as we can. And these discounts are are important, especially adding this one foot to the free board elevation, because we're going to see. Did you? And correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember a number like 18 percent increase in in flood insurance uh, rates. It well, they can they can raise the rates up to 18 percent per year. There's a there's a federal mandate that does not allow them to go above 18 percent a year. So until the 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 risk is balanced. It could be 18% this year and 18% next year. We just don't know at this point. Wow. Okay, thank you. Um, the fire prevention codes. I didn't get a chance to read through that entire code section. My one concern with that. Is that on item M? That would be M. We've not gotten there yet. Oh, we're not. We'll get there shortly. We know we're just going nice. through. Go. To L. You did. You did. did. To? But. We're, you're worth waiting for. You're worth, ex yeah, we'll, we'll get to that a little okay. later. We're, we're, right now we're on D through K. Good questions though. Uh, any other questions on, on these ordinances, items D through K, or questions you might have? Uh, which Lawrence? one do you have listed with the free board, the extra foot? Which one is that under? I'm sorry, Ms. Lawrence. On the extra foot uh, free board. Uh, that's on L. Yeah. Well, the we talked about that last week. The problem with that is right. the one where it's added in the building code. Right. That's the first book, the, the first item that we're uh, we're proposing to y'all. What they've done is they've gone from require FEMA regulations just require that you build at BFE, and the building code has never added free board to that. They also require that you just build at base flood elevation. But what's happened is in this transition, the building code. Uh, now requires that you go one foot above freeboard. So it's now become the standard instead of the exception. And so that's why we need the additional one foot is to make sure that we get that extra 100 points in there. Yeah, but the biggest problem we talked about that last time you was here is the costs don't create enough for the saving they save on a 5% on a premium. That was my biggest problem to add another foot. Is the expense to do that is way more than interest. 5% for the homeowners. Mm -hmm. it, we just have to look at the, the cost benefit ratio, you know, of, of 
whether it's not. Now, theoretically, you would think that going up another foot, if you're putting in pilings, wood pilings, is not going to be that much more expensive because the holes don't have to go any deeper. And usually you're having to, to buy a 14 foot because uh, they don't sell 13 foot 12 by 12s, you know. So, uh, it, and as far as the construction cost associated with those, I can't imagine a contractor charging a lot more just because the pilings were one foot longer than what they were previously having to put in. So, uh, I, I really don't look for the, the cost to be that much more expensive. Now, you know, an argument can be made that, well, what, what if they go with concrete block and they use concrete block? We don't see a lot of that. Most of the elevated houses that we have going in are all on wood pilings now. And, uh, it, you know, would that cost more? Probably a little bit more. But uh, uh, we, we certainly don't want to put ourselves in a position where we had the opportunity to get people maintain that extra 5%, you know, and we, we lost it over, you know, one foot of freeboard. Item L, though, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Mm. <clears throat> I guess my, my problem is is you had this foot on new construction, but the five percent affects everybody that's already paying the insurance. See, that, that's that's to me the problem with the insurance. You know, everybody likes the twenty five percent, but when somebody actually bills, you're talking about two different things, mm. and that shouldn't really be affecting the people that's already had the house built. That extra is not going to play and pay anything for them to do that because it's already done. So I, now that's why I have a problem with that. When he's playing with these dumb with hundred points here, these points there, we're going to lose five percent here. Hmm. You know, but the, what you had in free board is not doing anything that people already built, so that shouldn't affect those people. That's how I look at that. So I'm not a big fan of the extra foot anyway, but when you take the people that's already bought the house and paid for the house and fixed it up, they're going to lose the 5%. Mm -hmm. That's insurance. That's not right with the insurance. That's wrong. Okay. If if we could move and, and go ahead and act on items A through K, and then we'll continue this discussion if it's necessary on item L. Is there any other discussion on item A through K? Do we need to have a workshop? <laughs> oh, we already, we already had one. No, Ralph. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Glavin. You're welcome. Out of Ward 6. Uh, okay, I'll call for the question on items D3, D through K. All in favor? All opposed? This brings us to item L. If we need further discussion, this uh, goes back to what uh, Mr. Deming began discussing and then Mr. Lawrence uh, followed up. So that's where we are now. This is on uh, flood, paint, flood plain management and uh, construction and free board. Is there any more discussion or questions on this particular item? Yeah, yeah I think. Um, and it was, excuse me, it was, it was moved by Mr. Gaines and it was seconded by Mr. Barrett. Uh, Mr. Gaines, comments? Yeah, um, I think this is uh, after looking at it in the uh, workshop, I think um, we have enough problems right now in building as it stands. And I think we can wait for a little more information when it comes down to uh, this flood plan until we are pushed to actually do it. So I think um, in the sake of time, we could just go ahead. I'm, I'm going to uh, oppose it uh, for now, or at least table it until we get further information. And, th and that's what I'll ask uh, once we get through discussing it. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Gaines. Mr. Barrett? Hello. I have a question about um, you were talking about the the pylons being having going up a foot. How does that affect someone who's um, their plane um, allows them to build on a chain wall to raise their house? Would they have to raise an extra two blocks to get up that extra foot? Well, depending on where they are, you know, there are some places where chain walls are prohibited because if it's in the coastal A or in the V zone. You have to leave it open underneath for that surge to be able to go through there. But in the standard A zone, where you're dealing with rising and falling water, 
Yes, you would still have to elevate it so that the so that would affect finish their, floor. Yeah. So in that situation, it would affect their cost substantially. It would. Now let me let me just remind you of one thing that we discussed last week. The right now, the houses that are in the flood zone get a 25% discount, and the houses outside the flood zone get a 10% discount. And as we move forward with the changes to the ordinance, what will happen is that anyone in the city who has a flood insurance policy would get a 25% discount if we maintain our 25% discount. If we don't, then everyone who has a flood policy is going to go down to 20. So, okay. that's, that's, uh, I just okay. wanted to ask about that. So, yeah. are we not push? We're not pushed to do that yet, are we? Is there any deadline? It goes into effect October the first. I mean, these changes are going into effect whether we adopt this or not. So, and we have. Let me just tell you, there's some places in the code books where we have some flexibility. You know, there, there are code requirements in some of these books, but then you look down underneath and there are exceptions. We have no flexibility when it comes to FEMA. You're either in compliance or you're out of compliance. And uh, whereas before Hurricane Katrina, we might see the FEMA representative once every five years, we see them almost every week now, uh, the FEMA or the MEMA representative. It's, it's gotten to that point where we're constantly in contact with them. And uh, five years ago, they would come in, they would look at a couple of elevation certificates, and if they felt like that we were doing what we were supposed to be doing, they'd leave. Now they come in, they go over every elevation certificate, every document that we have to make sure. And then they'll hold up our, our rating, our request for rating. If there's something there, some I that wasn't dotted or some T that wasn't crossed, they'll give us the opportunity to go back and get it corrected. So it's... It's just a different world now than it was before Hurricane Katrina. Do you expect any uh, changes or any revisions uh, coming forth with what we're presented with now? I'm, I mean, I'm wondering if waiting a week, uh, as Mr. As Mr. Guy said, you know, might make a difference. Do you see that a week? No, okay. sir. No, sir. Mr. Gines. Well, quick question. Um, will we lose any points after October 1st? Is the question? I don't know. It's possible, and and Kristen has been on the phone. We we're going through right now what's called a, a CAV. It's a community assistance visit, and and we have to go through that every every few years, where they're actually checking our our documentation, and they've told us it's going to be very very difficult for us to maintain our five. Uh, the other cities around us have already lost a grade already, which means that their premiums have, have gone up. Um, but we're doing everything we can. I mean, we're constantly looking for any ways that we can maximize the points in here so that we can at least maintain what we got, you know, and try not to go up a grade. Now, with some of these changes that are coming that we don't know all the details on, we may still go up a grade but we just don't know enough about it right now to, to address it. Uh, yeah, and, and that's, that's kind of my point. If, if we don't know for sure whether we're gonna lose any points, <laughs> so we would be, um, so we don't actually know w whether we will be downgraded or not. Mm -hmm. um, why not wait and, until we get more information and feedback? Uh, also dealing with uh, our insurance company, uh, Frank to uh, see if he can, you know, have some kind of uh, element that he can bring to the council. We can always make the change later, it, it, in, it, my, in our opinion. It, it's up to the council. You know, I just want to make sure that you understand that we're, these these rates are, are going up. I mean, they're, they're going to go up, and we have an opportunity here to try to save points and and uh, keep people with their discounts. So uh, it, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. And one thing you said, Jerry, uh, first of all, we're not out of compliance with MEMA. The fits are in there. Their compliance is a foot that we already have in there. So we're not out of compliance with MEMA on anything. Not as of so today. Add, no. yeah. You're talking about adding something for another 5%. It has nothing to do with FEMA. But do we have, and these rules and regulations now, are in compliance with MEMA. 
So we're not out of compliance. Not, not today, no. Right. Any other discussion, comments? Uh, Mr. Gines, you mentioned that you might want to make a motion here to table or? Yeah, I, I would rather uh, table it um, uh, subject to call. I, I, I move to table it, call, uh, table it subject to call. I'll second it. All right, so there's a, a motion to table item L, subject to call. It's seconded by Mr. Lawrence. And any additional discussion on this? All right, all in favor of tabling this subject to call? All opposed? Okay, it's defeated on a 3-4 vote on the amendment, which brings us back to the ordinance to vote on the ordinance now. Um, this is item L, chapter eight. All in favor is presented. All opposed? Let me run through that again. We voted on the amendment. The amendment was defeated, which brings us back to the to this uh, ordinance here as presented. So all in favor of the ordinance as presented on item L. All opposed? All right, that was approved on 4-3 vote. Ms. Newman, you voted in favor of that? Okay, that was approved on a 4-3 vote. Thank you, that brings us to item M. If the clerk would read item M, please. Ordinance amending section 7-21, 724, 725, 726 um, for fire prevention code. All right, the motion was made by Mr. Glavin and the second by Mr. Barrett. Mr. Glavin, comments or questions? Uh, no, I, it, I mean, I think Jerry explained some of the particulars to us, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm for it. Mr. Barrett, anything? Mm -hmm. Any discussion by other members of the council? I, I, this is a very short code, so I did read through it, and I really wanted to nail you on something, but it, it's pretty clean cut. So I'll get you next time. <laughs> what a compliment, Chief Geyser. <laughs> All right, there being none, all in favor of the ordinance is presented. All opposed, that's approved on a 7 0 vote. It brings us to item N, if the clerk would read item N. Ordinance to amend appropriate sections of the land development ordinance for the specific use of animal husbandry. Thank you. The motion was made by Mr. Barrett and the second by Mr. Glavin. Mr. Barrett? I'm good. All right, thank you. Mr. Glavin, anything? Uh, I just want to make sure Mr. Deming read through this one thoroughly and doesn't have anything else to add. I do have a couple of things. <laughs> I thought you would. <laughs> Please, excuse me, Mr. Deming, let's not put the cart before the horse. <laughs> thank That's you. not a horse, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments by the council? I, I, I just Mr. have uh, a couple questions. First, um, for animal husbandry, does it require a license by the Justice of Peace? Bad marriage joke. Um, <laughs> more, <laughs> more importantly, um, the only real addition to this was the allowance of, of one horse for each one acre of land in limited residential um, estates and uh, or state and residential estates restricted zones to a total of up to two horses upon a single three plus acre lot size. Like that's the only addition. Why did we just add the allowance of one horse? Like what was the, what promulgated this change? The ordinance did not allow it in the RE and RER zoning. Horses and cows were only allowed in agricultural zoning with at least one acre. And so we've had requests from some people whose property happens to be zoned R RE and RER that are large pieces of property. They've come in and requested having horses. And so what we're doing is if the, if the property is large enough, you know, with R RE and RER, uh, they have to have an acre and a half and the animals still have to be at least 300 feet from the property line because in RE and RER, you do have more residential houses around than you do in agricultural zoning. So that was the reason for the change. Okay, thank you. There's nothing further. Any other questions or comments? All right, we're done horsing around. All in favor? 
All opposed, thank you. Tell them I didn't go over. Seven <laughs> All right, that brings us to item O. If the clerk would read the resolution, please. Resolution granting minor subdivision plat approval for 7127 Holly Drive. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. Moved by Mr. Barrett. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Glavin. Uh, Mr. Mr. Barrett. This is just taking a large piece of property and splitting it into two parts. That's all it is, yes. All right. Okay. Mr. Mr. Glavin, anything? Any other, any other questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Hey, Lawrence? We don't have any problem with flooding. We don't have problem with flooding everything out there. With, so is that good or bad? Or? Uh, this, this is just a large one large piece of like a six acre piece of property and they're just separating into two three acre parcels so it's it's yeah. there no creeks of no water not right there no we're good thank you that's all all right thank you we'll call for the question all in favor it's approved on a seven zero vote thank you that brings us to the consent agenda is there a motion moved by mr lawrence is there a second second by mr gaines Uh, we'll start with Mr. Gaines. Any questions on any particular items on the consent agenda, Mr. Gaines? None. None. Okay, thank you. Ms. Newman, any questions on any items? Mr. Lawrence, any questions or which? Yeah, I guess uh, we're doing the old keep. Did we get the annual report from them yet? I'm not aware. Mike, you know we've got a we did not you did not we got a financial statement but we don't have an audit okay. right down. Mm -hmm. got a financial statement p l okay and I, I noticed they they were required to carry it up they I mean, they pay for their own audit, whereas uh, opposed uh, to the seafood museum that we pay for it, so so we is, always get that one. This is the second question. We didn't get that one when we get it fine. Tiffany the million dollars on general liability. Did that reduce anything that we do with our property stuff? I know we own the property the building sits on. But I mean that would require to carry the million dollars with the liability, liability insurance. Mm -hmm. Does that affect us any at all with the city? Reducing anything we do with our property insurance or anything like that? I'm not sure the question. Well, I'm not sure the question. I, I will sit and I'll say this and maybe this will answer it. We have flood insurance and we have property insurance on the building. They also maintain liability insurance. We, and we have liability insurance and they have liability insurance and they have contents insurance. So of which one of those would you question? Well, I was just wondering. With them having a million dollars on the side, the liability, I didn't know if that helped us decrease our insurance that we pay through our property taxes throughout the city, not just that building, all of them. General liability. General liability. That's for accidents, I believe. Right. Yeah. So, but it does not affect us at all. I mean, it looked like they would help us in a sense if something happens on their property. It wouldn't be, our problem would be the insurance problem. So that's, that's all we're trying to get. I mean, you know, we deal with the property. Everything we deal with goes up. You know, Jerry said everything going up. You said everything going up. So I'm just like, well, maybe there's a way we can save money. Just a question. That's a good question. But I don't think it would be any appreciable discount. I mean, a lot of other properties we have, we make people have their own general liability insurance, where if somebody gets hurt at the museum, their insurance is first before ours so uh yeah so if, if someone got hurt then we would not have to pay any judgments or or pay any expenses so it would it would help us in that respect but uh as far as reducing our premium uh we have that general that general total policy that we have like that was handed out today they have one and we have one right okay this is just a question um, for Mike. On F, how'd you get any money out of the Intex? That's amazing. They're supposed to give you some kind of a grant. I mean, they don't do anything. 
The they destroy a lot of pipes. They mess up a lot of ground. But they had, uh, with the grant, you get a grant for what from them? That's pretty good. We we received the check the other day, so <laughs> I know they get it. They want the CSX payback. They're not they're not big on helping much anybody. You know. Center point. Oh, center point. Center point. Yeah. yeah. Now we another one. And I know on uh, this hole with the Gulf Breeze, Gulf Breeze is the one we hired that's doing all our. That that uh, that amendment to that mowing contract just redu reduces one one property that we sold, so we're not going to have to mow it anymore. That was just a one one property change. Well, I know they started out like a, a ball of fire, but they don't seem to be as good and quick they were before. I know you pay attention to them a lot because you deal with them all the time. Are they still doing the job they're supposed to be doing? Uh, I give them a C plus. C plus, yeah, I'm gonna say they miss some see. lots and they miss some lots some weeks, some um, some months, and when they miss them, they don't get paid for them. Yeah, that was my question back to you because I know that they. Yeah, I still like I still contend it's a hell of a good bargain compared to doing it ourselves. Yeah. Anyway. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Deming, anything? Yeah, I have a couple of them. Um, the contribution to the Slavic Benevolent Association. Yeah, and that's an advertisement to welcome uh, about a thousand people, uh, golfers, and mostly out of town. We didn't do it last year. It was not done last year. The county contributes, and as well as the city, we've been doing it in the past. Yeah, I know. I just wanted to re be reminded of what event and, and yeah, what the it's benefit a Slavic, is. It's a 46 Slavic Invitational. It's a fun, it's a fun event too. Um, the repair to the the Bellevue Parkway. What is? Can you just tell me what the damage is and what the repairs are? It, uh, first of all, it required no additional funding in that project. The project was uh, funded. There was still some money left, and and what happened was there was a washout. Uh, we we had a a situation where the a designer said it wasn't built according to their design. The con contractor said they built it like it was designed back and forth back and forth it was a small amount of money so we just paid to have the roadway fixed so um, we did that out of funds that 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 project is closed out now but but prior to that we had just a little bit of money left in it so we paid the contractor to go back and redo this the section that washed out okay thank you uh can you just tell me about the relocation of the 911 lines by AT&T um, look I can't remember I think it was like a thousands of dollars at our cost what what is that project for which which item it is item j yeah chief uh, oh. the new dispatch center is going through the upgrades all the 911 lines have to be rerouted under the floor okay but that's what it's for so it's it's, it's being done at our purpose not at mm -hmm. purpose no no it's absolutely mm -hmm. we're yeah we're okay complete upgrades okay thank you and i'd like to note for the record that i'm in opposition to r that's Romeo R. I'll note that and I'll mention it to the clerk. Uh, Mr. Barrett, any particular items? Yeah, I have a, a few. One eye on Bella, Bella, um, Bella V Parkway. So the contractor is not responsible. I mean, this was just completed, so they're not responsible well, Councilman, I think we've got into a situation where it was going to cost us more lawyer dollars than than paying the the contractor to fix the area that that washed out. Okay, and then second is th this originally was used from bond money. Is this ten thousand? Same bond money, no no additional money than what you authorized. Okay, and then um, on T. Um, this is basically closing out this project correct um, correct and this was the east drainage and the the piping under shriners and the and the, and the shriners uh duck okay and so that then, project is now i think that was very successful we could use about two more like that yeah um and then z is opening up something new this is the just compensation for the easements behind um Actually, actually, no. Actually, those were th uh, some easements that we thought we were going to need for the e for that project, but they were never needed. So we didn't ever have to pay them. Okay. All right. And then 
I would just like to um, say that I'm going to be opposed to FF. Um, and I mentioned this already. This is the addition. Um, you know, we've asked this contractor multiple times to come out and remove this stuff in Eagle Point Park. And until he can do that and finish a job, I'm going to be opposed to anything that that he um, his name's on the agenda for. All right. Is that it, Mr. Barrett? Yes, yeah, all. Thank you, sir. Mr. Glavin, anything? I have no further comments. Um, I have a question on item item 5M, which is uh, the Oro O'Keefe, just in, in reading through that on section 4.3. It says the museum's full-time paid employees will be eligible for the city's group health insurance to be paid pro, pro rata. So they're included in our in insurance program, but they pay their way, more or less. Is that, that correct? That's correct. They have the option to uh, be included in our insurance program or not. Um, when I last checked, and I'm, I apologize, Councilman, you told me you were going to ask this question. I meant to call Jill and double check with her. But there are three entities that participate in our insurance program that are not city employees. It's the Seafood Museum, the Oral Museum, and the uh, um, bank, the uh, credit union. Right, okay. And uh, in, in any, each case, not all of the employees choose to be in our insurance. Okay. Thank you. That answers my question. Uh, but when I heard washout in, in Belle La Vie, that reminded me on DeBees Road, just paved the north end. I think the Harrison County engineer sent a, an email this morning. I don't know if you saw it. That I, I did, and uh, we sent an inspector out. Actually, yesterday, he validated the fact we need to put some rock there, and Good Public deal. Works was ordered to do it. All right. All right, thank you. Um, there, there being no other discussion on these items, I think everybody's had a shot at them. All in favor of the consent agenda? Voting in favor of the consent agenda will come back to exceptions. It's approved on a 7-0 vote. And I believe uh, there were two exceptions noted, Mr. Barrett on item double F and Mr. Deming on item R. Were there any other exceptions? I abstain on R. And Ms. Newman is abstaining on item R. Any other exceptions? All right. Um, that brings us to code enforcement hearings. And uh, Mr. Creel, thank you. It's all yours. I'm kidding. Item A, Iris Place Subdivision, Zero Todd Cove. That property is still in violation. All right, is anybody here to speak on the matter of Iris Place subdivision at, at Todd Cove? All right, there being no one, this hearing is closed. We'll move to hearing item B, Mr. Creel. State of Mississippi, 321 Benaki Avenue. I'd like to ask for 30 days on that one. We found out uh, just this week that it's been acquired by someone. someone. So we're going to need to go back and address it with a new owner. I'll offer 30 days. All right, so I, I believe there's a motion by Mr. Gaines, and I think Mr. Lawrence was uh, there with a second. Okay, so there's a motion by Mr. Gaines and a second by Mr. Lawrence. Is that accurate? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, Anyone all in favor? It's approved on a 6 0 vote. i just note that this is okay. All right, that brings us to item C. Allen M. Wells, Zero Brady Avenue. I'd like to ask for 30 days on that one. The uh, Miss Wells' brother was here before the meeting, and they are working on it. And with 30 days, I think they'll get it get it resolved. I'll entertain a motion by Mr. Lawrence. Second. Second by Mr. Gaines. Any discussion? 
All in favor of the 30 day extension? It's approved 6 0. Next item, please, Mr. Creel. Kevin Bullard, Zero Lock and Drive. This one was given a 30 day extension on August the 17th. Mr. Bullard had left a uh, message on my phone today asking for an additional 30 days. It's still in violation. It does look like he's moved some of the uh, items around on the property, but obviously there's still a lot that needs to be cleaned up. If the council chooses to allow this to go through, then uh, if he cleans it up before we get a contractor, that's fine. That would be the end of it. But if not, we could go ahead and move forward to clean it up. So, What would you, your recommendation would be? To, to go ahead and let it go through, not to give it an extension. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there anybody here to speak on the matter of Larkin Drive? Kevin Bullard? Okay. There being no one, this hearing is closed. Item E, Mr. Creel. Kat Catherine Huber, 247 Bone Street. This property is still in violation. One of, the, one of the big violations on it was that they had cut down a number of trees in the back and had left them on the city right away. Those trees have since been removed, but the property is still in violation. All right, is anybody here to speak on 247 Bone Street? Catherine Huber. All right, there being no one, this hearing is closed. That brings us to item F. RW Development, LLC, 1816 Beach Boulevard. That case has been resolved. Thank you. Item G. Eddie Mae Smith, 238 Deloney Street. That property is still in violation. Okay, is anyone here to speak on the matter of 238 Deloney Street, Eddie May Smith? Okay, this hearing is closed. That brings us to the routine agenda, and I'll entertain a motion. Moved. By Mr. Lawrence. Second. Second by Mr. Gaines. Mr. Rohde, are you standing at the ready for you know what's about to come. Mr. Lawrence, question about the routine agenda. He knows the drill. Give us a good report here. So last, when I reported to the council, uh, we discussed the 4.672 million we received in August in the first week of September, excuse me, and we also discussed about possibly receiving another 300, 380,000. Uh, we went back to MEMA, and they're going to bump that up to 1.33 million. So we're hoping to have that maybe by mid to late October. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions about the routine agenda? Motion by Mr. Lawrence, second by Felix. Okay, call for the question. All in favor? It's approved on a 6-0 vote. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn by Mr. Deming. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant recess, a motion to recess. So we have Mr. Deming making that motion and Mr. Lawrence seconding that. All in favor? It's approved on a 6-0 vote. Thank you.